hello and hello and hi and how the heck are you? Hope you all doing well. I'm doing good. I'm very excited because I just listed my um, slow stitching kits on Etsy. On my Etsy, oh, I guess I better put an Etsy link. I better put the link to my Etsy underneath my, um, in the description box. That probably would help. Because right now, you know what? I don't even know what the name, name of my shop is. I think it's Scrappin' Lizzie. I think Scrappin', not Scrapping, Scrappin'. Not sure. I'm not too... I am the CEO. That doesn't tell you much. Okay, anyway. I want to show you now how I pack the box. Now, when you go to Etsy, you will see that there is two listings for this kit. One of the listings includes a cigar, cigar box. The other one does not. Because I'm thinking some might want a cigar box to use as like a little sewing box. But some may have their own cigar sewing box and they don't need a cigar box or do not want a cigar box. And also, the listing that does not include the cigar box is less expensive than the listing with the cigar box. And it's also less expensive in the shipping. So um, you would save money if you don't want the cigar box. But I do offer it in the cigar box or without. So I'm going to show you now. I'm going to pack a box. I'm going to pack the box. So here we go, down here. The first thing I will put in here is... Let me see. I think I'll put move this over here and push that sewing machine over there. And then I will put this, this is one of the cigar boxes. All the cigar boxes won't be exactly the same. They're all different because I never know what I can get when I get the cigar boxes. But this one is a really nice cigar box. I don't charge any extra for the dust. And so, but that is what the cigar box packed ones are going to be packed in. Now, if you do not want the box, you'll just, everything will come, everything will be the same things in the same amount, but they will be packed in a Ziploc bag, and then that way you can put, put it in your own sewing box. Now, first of all, you'll have a 12 by 12 piece of muslin for the base of your slow stitching art project. And this is a textile art. This slow stitching is, is is an art. And you can really, really, really um, get creative on these. Oh, I just wanted, just a minute. I want to just show you. Yeah, I'm prepared. Um, this one, probably most of you have seen this one. But this one is, I'm working on, I'm just putting it on a washcloth. And I've been slow stitching on, everything is just slow stitching. And slow stitching is nothing more than putting a needle and some thread. You can use any kind of thread. Um, a lot of this that I have used is um, embroidery floss, but you can also use crochet cotton. You can use regular sewing thread. You can use any kind of thread. This has no rules. And so, but you see there's buttons, there's, oh, you know, I got a piece of denim. I didn't put any denim in that kit. I got to put some denim because I think everybody might like that. I've looked on Etsy and I've looked, I've looked at some of the, um, kits that they have on Etsy and I see that a lot of them are like themed. This one is not themed. What I, as you can see here, there's no theme. It's just fun. It's just put some pretty things on here and I'm not finished with it. I use the sewing machine around the edge and but I think the rest of it is all stitched and so and then I even like the backs. <laughs> So anyhow, slow stitching is the way to go. It is so much fun. So there you go. The first thing is going to be that um, 
12 by 12 um, 12 by 12 panel now you can you you can you can cut this down if you want to cut it down and make it even smaller that's up to you you can make four six by six panels and then then some may want to make a snippet roll so for those who might want to make a snippet roll I have got um, two pieces of of a print and these are 42 inches long by two and a half inches wide and there's going to be two of those strips now these strips you can use that as a snippet roll or you may want to just cut them up and put them on your any slow stitching now so that's going to be in there there's also this little piece of muslin that is about 12 inches by about three maybe yeah, 12 by 3-ish. This one here is kind of, that's going to be kind of, you know, just iffy what size that one is. But those will be in there. Now, each one is going to have this little needle book. It's just a simply made needle book made out of felt. It's got two safety pins on the front. When you open it up, the first page has got three straight pins. And then on inside you have on the next page you have three needles so you have the heavier kind of embroidery kind of needle um, this is the small ones also an embroidery needle but it's thinner and and um, it's thinner so you can sew beads on because we're gonna I'm gonna be doing a series on on slow stitching which is going to be including a lot of different things that I'm learning and then in the back, there's a little pocket in the back of it. And in there, there's a little um, needle threader. Okay, now. And then it is held closed by a little um, quilting clip. So that will be in there. Then, let's see. We have quite a few fabric pieces. And... Each one is different, so there's, there might be two the same in, in there only if they got stuck together when I was packing. I didn't count these, but there is way more than you need for that one piece, so this will really get you um, started. This here piece of fabric is off of a vintage handkerchief. It's a piece of one. It's not the whole thing just a piece but it's got the little edging on there which is really pretty and um and then here's a small piece with some owl owls on it here's some batik there this is a little piece that's got um some it's like uh do, 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 do. i know what that's called eyelet it's like an eyelet finish and um, I, like an eyelet lace almost, but it's got beautiful colors in there. That will look so pretty. And there's one with just flowers on here. When you have a piece like this that's got like single little images on it, you can actually cut that flower out right there and add that flower and um, maybe make a stem on it, maybe make some leaves, and that be on your, um, this is a cute one. It's um, got little kittens on it. And like I say, they're all going to be different. They're all going to be a lot the same, but still different. Elvis, that's beautiful Elvis fabric. And here's some fabric that's got butterflies on it. And again, you can cut that butterfly out. I've done, with this fabric, I have cut out the butterfly and stitched it on. This is um, Snoopy. <laughs> it's a little winter picture. Polka dots. Pink. And they're just all different. They're just all different. And so you have... Um, such a collection and this here fabric that I got in my happy mail I was so impressed with this fabric I'd never seen it before and I figure I'm gonna put some pieces in the kit so other pig because I don't know I'm assuming nobody's ever seen this before 
I just think that's amazing. Okay, and then here, look how pretty and bright. There's a, like a school bus. This is like just pretty. And this is just like balloons. And this is pretty too. That's, that's pretty. Um, so there's many different pieces. I just love this one with the scarecrows. And just purple. And then, and then, and you know, you can, you can take a piece and you can cut out a heart. And, or a, any kind of a shape and stitch that to your project. And then there's another one. That, that one's really, really pretty. And like I say, they're all, these ones that I've put together now, I've got 10 kits actually put together. And a lot of those fabrics are the same, you know, the same collection. But as I go on and put more together, the fabrics are going to change. You know, they're going to be, some are gonna be the same, but they're going to change. And I will always put some in that I think are like kind of plain like these, but then, and like this one, but then some being very fun, you know, um, like the kittens or the Snoopies, you know, um, what do they call them? There's a name they call them fabrics. Yeah, but they're called um, novelty fabrics, okay? Papa's in here with me too. He's helping me. He's helping me behave. Okay, and so with a lot. Okay, so that's the fabrics, and there must be at least twenty-five pieces of that fabric in there. I didn't count them, but I'm guessing. And then you're going to get in the kit. You're going to get pieces like this. This is a part of a vintage doily, and um, so there's crocheting on the edge. It's just a part of one. And somebody else might get another part of this same one. And so, but when you start slow stitching this onto your project, you will see how awesome that this will, um, that will turn out. Here's a small piece of a very um, fine crocheted doily. That's a piece of one. This here is so neat. I I just love this with the way this is done. It's almost like a waterfall. Ooh, that just closed my arm. Um, but it's like satin. And, and this actually came off of a pillow sham that I cut. It was so pretty. Bought it at the Goodwill and I cut it apart because I just thought the pieces are just amazing. So that's what you do too when you are if you're at a thrift shop or something, you might see a pillow sham or something, a curtain, something that's got, um, you know, extraordinary, beautiful pieces. I mean, that it's made from the fabrics and stuff. And so those are the things you snatch because, boy, you can really make some pretty things with them. Here's a little piece of a sheer ribbon. And here's some lace. Here's a little piece of Battenberg lace. And so this is way more than you're gonna need for a 12 by 12, um, a 12 by 12 piece, but you got, you, you, so, but this'll get you going. This'll really get you going. And so now this one here is a piece of very vintage trim. This is a small crochet doily. This is also a hand, I don't know if it's hand crocheted or if it's machine crocheted because you know, nowadays you can get a lot of machine crocheted things too. But look at how pretty it is, it's beautiful. And then this piece of lace, little white and pink. This one's all pink. That's pretty. And see, when, when you have something like this, you might put that on your, on your piece, you know, you might put that on a p on your piece, and then you got that color, and then you might add, you know, you layer it. You can layer it, or even put this underneath, and then you got this, and then stitch on that, and so it's layered, and you can see that through it. Plus, you see your backing. It's just. Um, you, you know, some of you have already done slow stitching, so you know this stuff, but some of you haven't done it yet. And boy, you're in for such a treat. And, um, here's some red and here's some pretty white. It's got some iridescent in that. And this one here has got some of the, um, little, 
I don't know what they call that, but it's very, very pretty flower that's on that sheer fabric. And then we have, I have, oh, here's another very small little doily. This one here, I would say is vintage. It comes from another era. Here you go. Look at that, how pretty that is. And when you have something like this, you could maybe even cut this apart more and have two pieces. This one here's a little butterfly. I don't have a lot of these left, so some of them are going to have the butterfly, but not all of them. This here, this will be pretty um, because this here, I, I want to build like, I've got a piece of this that I'm going to use as well on, on, on mine and it looks like it would be such a beautiful dress. So I'm almost thinking that I want to somehow build a little body on my slow stitching and that will be her dress. Oh, this is another one like that one there. And here again, there is a part of a doily, but look at it, it's white and pink. Again, look how you could make that into a little dress or anything. And then here is a small doily, green around. And then here again. So you have plenty of those to work with. And then, oh, there's four vintage buttons right there on a card. That's going to go in there. And here... um. I had been making some snippet rolls already, and but what I did was I snipped it apart and made pieces. And then I took and I put some of my pieces in there. This one here also was something I was just stitching together, but I cut it apart into pieces, and then these will go beautiful on on a um on your art project. And I'm just packing them all in that in that box. They'll just get all packed in that box beautifully. And then I have trims. There'll always be some trims. This here is like a um, beaded trim. But I'm going to show you too how you can put this even in this in the videos that I make. You'll see how to even attach beads like that to your project. This is some red, white, and blue. I think this is very vintage, too. I'm guessing about the vintage things, though, but I think that one is a little tiny piece. Little tiny pieces like this is what you need. You need those little tiny pieces. And this little tiny piece, this here was on like a table runner. But the fabric in the table runner was completely tattered and torn. It was just, you just pull on it a little bit and it just tore apart but this was the edging that was on it and I said well that edging is still good so I'm saving that and then here's another little trim here's some more little trim and you know you all might have some trim already yourself and in this now you all might have all of this kind of stuff yourself so when I start doing the um series of slow stitching you may not need to purchase a kit you may already have everything that you need to start your um you don't have to have a kit to uh, work along and play along with us and then i got a couple pieces of um this um oh this trim here that is like a fabric ribbon almost i guess and then, see, just in my stash, I have got the prettiest little items. Like, look at this here and how pretty that is. And that's in there. And then rickrack. I love using rickrack. Now, rickrack is fun. Like, if you have, I have made some of these and put these in there, too. These are my little hexagon flowers that I make. I've made quite a few of them so that they can be in there. But, like, you can be putting putting um, a flower on your slow stitch and this can be the stem so there's so much you can do this is beautiful ribbon right here this is just beautiful this was sent to me in the happy mail and um and i parted with some of it but i was kind of greedy and kept most of it but i parted with some this is lace that's just a hemming lace but how pretty that is when you stitch it on. This is a Clooney lace. 
when you see a crocheted lace like this, they call that Clooney. That's a Clooney lace. It's all cotton fabric lace. And that is pretty. And then here, this is more of a, like a satin ribbon here. All different colors. This is very eclectic. We don't have anything in here that is um, matching. I'm not into all that matchy stuff. I like eclectic. I like beautiful things. You know, you could even take this little piece and fold it into a leaf shape. And then, and then when you have your... Then you can, see, I see these things as I'm going. I just love doing this. So you can put your stem, put your flower, and fold this and put it into a leaf and get that sewed onto your, onto your project. These two pieces here are like a foam, or no, felt. They're like a felt in here. See, it's like flowers. Now, I was thinking that this could be cut apart and how pretty this would be. Like if you had a piece of this, but then you just whip stitch it all the way around with like a bright yellow or something. That would, I think that would be gorgeous. Mm. So there's a couple pieces of that. There's a, some black rickrack. There's some yellow. There's So there'll be different colors. Here's a piece of ribbon that's got... Um, it's glittery. Who knows what that will happen? What will happen with that? Here's a little piece of black lace. And here is a, this is a, um, a button that is a, it's part of a frog. You know what a frog is? A frog, uh, a frog cloth <laughs> closure that a lot of times they use it in Japanese kimonos and stuff. They'll use a frog. There'll be this part on one side and then just another one of these on this side, on this side of the kimono, and that's how you close it. And they call them a frog. And then here we have some, um, now these you'll see have got the paper inside and and we're going to be working with these as well on our, um, on our, uh, in the, um, in the slow stitching learn learnathon. It's going to be a learnathon. Um, I'm not teaching, I'm learning, but I want to learn along. I want you all to learn along with me. So as I learn something, then you all will learn too. And so I'm just learning about these hexagons put on the paper and then stitch together. So that's something that we're going to be learning. This, and these ones here, I have showed how I make these. Um, these hexagons, these are different. And so there'll be some of those in there. And there's going to be some of these. i got to get more of these in this one. This is not enough. Um, these are, um, they're called Suffolk, pu Suffolk Puffs. Suffolk puffs in some countries, but we call them yo-yos over here. But I like the word Suffolk puffs, puffs, so that's what I've been calling them. And these are pretty to put a button on if you want to, or anything in the middle of them. Here's a little crocheted flower. It's like a little pansy. Here's a larger um, Suffolk puff or or yo-yo. This one's made out of flannel. It's so pretty. And um, then here is a. A, a silk ribbon. This is a piece of, um, this is what we use in felting. When we're doing felting, this is called the, and now it's leaving me now too. This is, before it's yarn, it's this. When you're making, this is wool. Before it's yarn, it's this stuff. And right now that word is leaving me. But I want to put some of this. I haven't done it yet, but I'm going to be putting some of this in each one of the kits because I want to actually um, stitch this. I think it's going to be called, Is I think it is part of what they call the... Um, mm. The words are leaving me now. There's where where you just stitch around and then stitch around and stitch around and stitch around and you can just shape it. You can shape it into a letter or anything. And then here's a, a tiny piece of like some it's like a organza fabric. But so you can take that piece and you can gather it up and you can have a flower.
This is going to be an art project. This this finished square is going to be like an art project in itself. You can make a whole bunch of them if you want to and put them together and make a quilt if you want to, but you don't have to. You just can do it all up and just make a square and just but look at that if you were to make that into a flower. See, I'm getting ideas just looking right here. And so, and here's a tiny little pair of angel wings here. And so all of this is going to go in the box. And I put on the, I had to put a weight. Um, I think I put one pound and almost two pounds. So I'm going to make sure, see, because for them to figure the shipping... This is going to be easier for me by using Etsy because then they figure the shipping so you know the shipping right away. And like when I do a live sale, you don't know what the shipping is going to be. I don't know what the shipping is going to be. And so this way by using Etsy, then um, then we know what the shipping is going to be right away. And so then if you say, oh, the shipping is too much, then you don't order, you know. And and I found that in my live sale that I did, um, some of the people said, oh my God, no, I'm not paying that much in shipping. And so then they didn't want their orders. And so um, so that's why for me, this is going to work so much better on, on Etsy because, and then, and then for you too, because then you know what the price is, you know what the shipping cost is going to be. And so... And I think I can add some more to this box to get my weight up now um, so that I have all the weight that's that's allowed. But now in here I have two full skeins of of crochet cotton of of embroidery floss. And in this one I have eight, I think I put in there. Eight of the bo the bobbins now i have found as i've been going through some of my flosses that i have because i'm not an embroidery expert at all i don't know but there is some of this that i have learned now because most like this here piece of floss is six strands now there is some like this one I went to try to pull it apart, and it didn't pull apart. It is different, it's, so it's something different, and I don't know what it is. This one here is embroidery floss. You can see the strands, but see, some of these that look twisted is something else, so maybe somebody can can um, help me figure out what that is, and I think I'm actually going to add a little bit more to this because I want to put in, some, look at this one here, it's like all different colors, it's variegated, it's so pretty, and but I think I want to put even some just crochet cotton and I'll put it on some of these little bobbins too, and so these are handy having them on there, and so I put eight of those in here I'll just put them in that little bag and so there's eight well ten different colors because I put those two full skeins in there too the ones that are um, not these aren't a full skein these are like a half a skein on these on these bobbins these are a full skein so then you've got a couple of those and so and then in here, these are the small tiny beads I was talking about that you would need um, the skinny needle to be able to sew them beads on. But we're going to be show we're going to be putting beads on our piece as well. I won't start my um, my I won't start my series at least for probably another week before I actually start the series because I want those who want to get their supplies together if you already have them in your house get your supplies together if you do if you're going to order a kit then that should give you enough time for the kit to get to you and then here i have put in a just an assortment of buttons there's all kind of different buttons a couple dozen buttons in there but they're just all different and um but those buttons are fun to put like in the center of a of a um of something, you know, uh, like the little whatever I just 
called them boogers. But anyhow, now this box isn't all the way full, so I'm going to have to put more stuff in there. Well, I'll weigh it. See, I'll, I'll figure out because I put already in because Etsy wants to know, well, what is your package going to weigh? And so I weighed this and I added a few ounces to what this one was weighing so that I knew I could add some more if I want to. But I do want to fill the box up. Now, if the boxes are all different too, so there's going to be different different size boxes, and so, but it's going to be the same amount of things. If the box is smaller and all of the stuff doesn't fit in, well, then the, whatever the overflow is will be packaged with this box. So I just wanted to show them, I have show them, show you all, because I have been um, talking about getting these together, and, um, and so now I've got them together, so then there will be a choice of either having it with the box or without the box, and so without the box, you will save some money, but with the box, you've got a box. So that's going to be totally up to you. So now let's see. I'm going to pick this book this time. And I'm going to read. Um, let's, let's see what I should be of good cheer. There you go. Be of good cheer. That's what I'm going to read today. Okay. <laughs> Since fear and dread and worry cannot help in any way, it's much healthier and happier to be cheerful every day. And if we'll only try it, we will find without a doubt a cheerful attitude's something no one should be without. For when the heart is cheerful, it cannot be filled with fear. And without fear... The way ahead seems more distinct and clear. And we realize there's nothing we need ever face alone. For our Heavenly Father loves us. And our problems are His own. And that is Be of Good Cheer by Helen Steiner Rice. And so, oh, there's Papa. Say, say hi, Papa. Hi, y'all. How y'all doing tonight? That's Papa. That's Papa. He's, he's got his tablet there. He just got him a computer today. He found a place to go purchase a computer that all they sell is refurbished computers. And the very nice gentleman is just owned by just old family mom and pop store. So he found him in this little computer because we got that stimulus, you know, that stimulus. So we got all stimulated and he went and bought him himself a computer. And so... um. But but then the guy at the computer store, he also just gave him a little attache case to put his computer in, which he'll never put in there. So he told me I could have the attache case, and I'll, I'll keep something in there. I'll keep important stuff in it, maybe. And then also the guy at that store gave us a big old bag of lemons off of his lemon tree. Lemon tree, very pretty, and the lemon flower is sweet, but the fruit of the lemon is impossible to eat. Lemon tree, very pretty, and the lemon flower is sweet, but the fruit of the lemon is impossible to eat. There we are. But I already made me a glass of lemonade with one of the lemons, and it was so, so good. So it's nice. To, and they're big Florida lemons, so they're big. They look like almost an orange, but they're lemon. And so I made me a glass of lemonade, and I already drank that. And so, okay, so that's it. I told you all I'd let you know when they're posted. And I will put my Etsy, my Etsy link under the video so that, so that you all can just link right on over there. Link right on over there. But like I say, you don't need to have the kit. This kit is made for those who, because some have told me, I just don't have that stuff. There's a lot of people that are minimalists and they don't say, I am not a minimalist. Mm -mm. 
I save everything because you just never, never know. You just never know when you're going to need it. That's right. You just never know when you're going to need it. So I save everything. Well, almost everything. But anyhow, I ask God to watch over you tonight. Every step you take, every move you make. And I and Papa will see you on the next video. God bless. God bless. Where's my mouse? There it is. There's my mouse. Right there it is. Okay. God bless.